ಕೃಷ್ಣನೆ ಬಂದು ಕೃಷ್ಣನೆ ಬಂದು ಮೀರ್ಗಾಲೈ ತಾಕೇಕೋ ಮೀರ್ಗಾಲೆ ಮೈಲೆ ತಾಕೇಕೋ ಐ ನಾಮಾಯಾಲೈ ತಾಕೇಕೋ ರಸಂ ಪಿರಿರಿ ರಸಂ ಪಿರಿರಿ Beautiful mountain setting, so that's probably the first reason I came here. Now it's yeah. always come back because of the people. You come back rejuvenated after a trip here. Nepal is a country that starts from sea level all the way to 29,000 feet. Everything in Nepal um, has a beauty of this culture, the traditions and history of monastery, temples and Sherpa culture. In Everest region, uh, everything is based on farming. Everything is still by hand, hoeing the field, uh, using animals to dig the ground. Other than that, there's no machines to dig the, dig the field. So everything has to be flown in from Kathmandu and then carried on the back of the humans uh, or yak or mules. Um, trails are pretty rugged. It could be really dusty, it's, it's rough. With the, with the big suspension bridges that crosses from one town to the other big river valleys. And so if you imagine carrying that much of a load at that altitude and this rough terrain is pretty hard life. I was lucky to stand on the top of Everest off the back of Sherpa and climbing support from the people of the region. When I, when I think of the homes and the people that I've seen and visited, how, the, how harsh the environment is for them living each day, People are just cooking in their home with wood fires, right smoke just pluming up into the house. They're using, you know, glacial water, freezing cold, just using bar of soap and put, the, put rocks down and scrub their clothes. The opportunities just aren't there and they, they can farm the land or get involved in trekking or tourism. Um, that's all they have. On April 25th, I was in Everest base camp and the table started shaking back and forth in the dining tent. I ran out and we all sort of stood there and for two minutes the rocks of the glacier were grinding together and it was super loud and it was like being on a boat. And finally after almost two minutes it stopped and that's when we realized it was an earthquake. There are tons of people out of their tents. And then this huge rumbling came from the amphitheater but, but because it was really foggy, you didn't know where, which direction exactly it was going to come from. So we're all just sort of looking around anxiously out of the fog, this giant white wave cloud started coming down and emerging on base camp. Um, and that's when it got real scary. It shot rocks and missiles and debris and ice and tents and things at people because of the compression from the ice that hit the side and then blew across the camp. And so then when you walk through the disaster zone, it was like a tornado or a hurricane completely destroyed. I had walked out three days and I was in Namche Bazaar, the biggest village in the Kumbu region, when the earthquake struck. And things started to rumble and then the floor started to roll and everybody freaked out, jumped up and ran to the doorway and stood in the doorway. We didn't want to go out in the street because there were stone buildings. We didn't want to get hit by stones falling down, but the whole thing was shaking. And it was pretty amazing. I had never been in an earthquake before. People were afraid to stay in their houses because they were afraid that the aftershock would bring the house down on top of them. Everybody moved out of their houses and set up tents and got under tarps. You could see they were really, really freaked out. And I, it, it makes sense too, because their whole world was, they didn't know what was going on. They didn't know if they were gonna, you know, if there were gonna be more earthquakes, where they were gonna get help, how this would affect their lives. There is no such thing called safety net in Nepal for people. There is no such thing called house insurance or rent insurance or anything like that. So therefore, when earthquake hit like this and devastated the homes and all ground level, there is no insurance to claim. That's why we need to go in there and help them out. And Sherpa Foundation has a step in the Everest region with the funds we raised, Sherpa Foundation was able to help 96 families, 96 homes. We investigated going into each individual homes, 
figuring out how much they need and who are actually in category A and who are actually in category B. We then came to a day that where all the neighbors were brought in and then distributed the fund. What was so special about distributing the fund is that people receiving the funds were extremely excited and happy about getting a new homes. But the feelings that I received, the expressions that I received from them is priceless. All the building materials that has to be brought in from the capital now that has to go back to the Himalayan in the remote area of Nepal on the back of people, rods, plywoods, metal sheet roofs, cements, anything you name about building materials, it has to be carried on the back of a people. When it comes to building homes, everything that you, you do is by hand. There's no such thing as lumber yard in Nepal. Everything you have uh, or you need for building material wise, like uh, lumbers, beams, pillars, anything you need, you have to arrange with some guys who knows how to cut the lumbers. Anytime when there is bad disaster happens, um, I've heard that something good comes out. And I think that's exactly what's happening in the Everest region because people are now using rebar, enforcing rebars in between the rock walls, putting cements. The new buildings are going to be much more stronger, much safer, and it will last longer. The best thing about distributing the fund is making sure that the project is completed as we wish to see. And that's one thing what I did is I was there for two months and we went back again and again and checked the progress of construction. And after I left Nepal, my brother, Ngong Lakpa, who is actually checking on the remaining homes that are being built right now. When I walk through the Himalayas, I see the Sherpa Foundation in action. They're the only ones that were doing anything. Um, and they really had such passion and uh, drive to make it happen. It, these guys are actually bringing every dollar to the ground and that's what needs to happen and they're the ones that are making it happen. And there's no admin costs, there is no wages being paid, everything was going into the region. And the Sherpa Foundation are actually making it happen on the ground. The most important thing for a children is to go to school, they need to have a good night's sleep, a good place to live, a good environment to start from, which is home. Their home environment just needs to be totally improved and that was before the earthquake um, so now they're in, in serious trouble. With, uh, with whatever little funds we are able to collect we were the Sherpa Foundation was able to help so many families but there's so much more to do. The living condition in the Himalayan are still under tents with the moldy tents. People are living under a shack. People are still struggling to have a roof over their head. So there's a lot more that we can do. Yeah. <laughs>